This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. We're going to switch gears now and discuss animation. Animation is necessary to impart motion to objects in your scene. For example, I have a scene open now that has animation applied to this ball. This is called ball underscore fall dot mb, and it's in the chapter 10 folder. Once I have animation, I can play it back and go down here to the bottom right playback controls and hit play. The animation is played and the ball moves. I'll continue to play back and loop around until I hit the stop button to stop it. Another way to scrub the animation is to grab the time slider. Time slider is this dark gray bar here on the timeline. Click drag that and drag through the animation either forwards or backwards. When you let go, you're left at that particular frame of the animation. So for example, I let go at frame five here. So that means that the sphere or this ball is at that position at frame five. You can also tell it's frame five because the current time cell is set to five right here. So this particular animation lasts for 60 frames. I can tell that because the range slider is set to one to 60. Set to one here at the far left cell of the range slider and set to 60 at the far right cell of the range slider. That means the animation lasts 60 frames. This bar in the center is a way to zoom into the timeline and look at different parts. If you grab either end and click drag, you can zoom into a smaller section of the timeline. For example, if I let go at 27 and 32, I can look at just frame 27 through frame 32. It's just a way to zoom in. You can also move this off to the right to look at different parts of that total range. Or you can turn this to the full length and therefore look at the entire animation or the entire range on the timeline. So now it says 1, 1, 60, 60. So now I'm looking at the full 1 to 60 range. So animation in Maya is based on frames. And the way it works is there's so many frames per second. And there are common frame rates or frames per second that are based on historical precedents and based on common technology. And the most common frame rates are 24, 25, and 30. Motion picture film, the type is actually shot on film, is 24 frames per second. Video, at least in North America, is 30 frames per second. If you're working in video in Europe, then you're probably working in 25 frames per second. So 24, 25, or 30 frames per second. Now you can determine what frame rate you're working in inside Maya. In fact, you can go up to Window, Settings Preferences, Preferences, and set that. So I'll go to the Preferences window. And in the Settings section, if I click on the word Settings, there's a time attribute, and that determines the frame rate, or what's called frames per second, or FPS. In this case, it's set to the default, which is 24. That's 24 frames per second. That means that on the timeline, if I scroll through 24 frames, that's one second worth of playback. You can also set time to other frame rates, such as 25, which again is a European video, which is called PAL, or 30 frames per second, which is North American video, which is NTSC. I'm going to leave it at 24 right now because that's what the animation was created with. So it plays back at a certain frames per second. Now there is a way to affect how the playback is working when you're using the playback controls. If you go to the time slider section, the preferences window, there's an important option. So time slider and look at playback speed. The playback speed affects the playback through the playback controls. There's two major modes. There's either real time or play every frame. If it's set to play every frame, it will attempt to display every single frame of the animation, regardless of how fast or slow your machine is. It's a little dangerous because if your operating system is a little bit slow, or maybe your scene is very heavy because you have lots of models, the playback might not be accurate. Because the playback is showing every frame and every frame has to go through the graphics card, you might wind up with an inaccurate speed. The other option is real time. If it's at the real time, the Maya will place the importance of correct playback speed over showing every frame. So if it has to, it will drop frames in preference for showing a more accurate speed of playback. 
And ultimately, when you're trying to determine the quality of animation, that's more important. So real time is a better option to use in this situation. So I'm going to leave that set to real time. But if you do change any of the options in this window and you want to update them, you simply click the Save button to save that change. And now I'll exit the window. So now I'm set to playback real time. So my playback will be more accurate. And of course, animation was created at 24 frames per second. So in order to move over a period of one second, 24 frames are involved. Now what makes the ball actually move? What makes it move over time is something called keyframes. Keyframes are created by the user. And keyframes are a means to force Maya to remember where an object is at a particular frame. So for example, if I select this sphere, I can tell there's keyframe animation on it several ways. First, I can see that the channel box is all red. That means that these attributes in the channel box have been keyframed. They have animation on them. You can also tell because the timeline has little red lines. Every place there's a little red line, that's a keyframe. What does that mean? Let's say I go to frame 11. There's a keyframe right there. That means that I've told Maya to remember that the ball needs to be at this position on frame 11. And the information about where it is in terms of translate and even rotate and scale is stored in a keyframe at frame 11. If I go to another frame, like frame 36, where there's another keyframe, that keyframe is telling Maya that the ball needs to be at this location at frame 36 with a very particular rotation and scale. So the user actually places the keyframes manually. You get to determine where the keyframes are, and you get to determine what position, what rotation, and what scale your object has for that particular frame, and therefore store that inside the keyframe. Now you notice that the ball is moving smoothly the entire time, yet there is not a keyframe at every single frame of the timeline. That's because Maya is doing something rather clever. It's actually in between the other positions. So for example, if you set a keyframe at frame one, and the sphere is right here, and then set a keyframe at frame six, and the sphere is here, Maya will fill in all the in-between positions. So for frame two, three, four, and five, it determines the position itself. It'll go, well, the sphere is here for frame one, and here for frame six, therefore it should be about halfway for frame three. So Maya actually does all the in-between for you. That's a great thing about 3D animation is the fact that the program will provide in-betweens automatically. If you're doing more traditional animation, like say hand-drawn animation, like old Disney films, if you want additional positions, you'd have to draw them. Maybe you have a drawing for frame one and a drawing for frame 10. If you want a drawing for frame five, you'd have to draw it yourself. So luckily Maya helps provide additional in-between positions when you set a limited number of keyframes. Now we're going to talk about how to set keyframes in great detail in a later video. Another question might be though, how do you figure out where they belong? Well, keyframes are kind of like critical points of a story. If you were to tell a story about this ball falling and bouncing off this plane, what would be the critical parts of the story so that you can tell a story in a minimal number of steps? The important point might be, where does the ball start? That's a great place for a keyframe. Another critical point of the story might be, where does the ball end up? That's another great place for a keyframe. Another critical point of the story may be, where does the ball hit the plane the first time? Where does it collide? Another critical point, another place for a keyframe. Another point might be where it bounces up. Where is that its highest point in the bounce? Or where does it hit the edge of the plane? So what you can do is take any kind of motion turn it into a really simple story, determine the minimal number of steps to tell a story, and those become your most important keyframes. Where do you start? Where do you stop? Where do you hit another object? Where do you bounce up in the air? And so on. Those can be thought of as keyframes. Now this particular animation has more keyframes than those critical story points, but if I was to do the animation with a minimal number of keyframes, I could just do where it starts, where it stops, where it hits the plane, where it bounces, where it hits a second time, and where it falls through space. Now you can place keyframes wherever you want though. Now the fine tune animation, you probably will go in and add additional keyframes beyond those basics. That's one way to think about how you determine where a keyframe would even be in the first place.
And as I said, we're going to go back and talk about how to apply the keyframes through Maya in more detail.